So how do we get our web pages that we've created um, onto the internet? So we could create web pages with any simple text code editor. In fact, we can use Notepad to write our code out and we can then use that code and open it with a command O or control O and I can actually go in there find that file that I've been coding and place it on my page or on the browser. So the browser is going to render the page but it's not live on the internet. Notice the URL or the web address. It's just a local path referring to the location on your computer's hard drive of where the HTML file is saved. No one else on the internet is going to be able to see your page opening it this way. Here is another way you could open it locally. I'm in VS Code this time, which is a more advanced code editor. An editor like this is designed more for coding, and you can see that there's text colors corresponding to different types of syntax, and there's lots of other more advanced features as well, which makes it much easier to code versus just a simple text editor like Notepad. This VS Code also has an extension called Live Server that allows me to open my HTML file in the browser again. So if I run that, you'll see it's still using a local host address, address um, or my own computer's location. Again, I am not live on the internet with this. I can't give this web address to other people. They would not be able to see it. Now, opening your web pages this way is fine as you're developing them and you want to see how they look. But how do you get your web pages onto the internet so that anyone can see them? This is going to require a place to store your files where they can be retrieved by anyone. This is called hosting. You can pay a hosting company and they'll let you store your files on their server. You can also, you can purchase your own server as well. You can purchase your actual hardware to create your own web server to store your files. Setting up your own web server requires quite a process to get your server ready to store all the files. And it also has to be available 24 seven and have a good internet connection and all those kind of things. So a lot of people will just use somebody else's servers that are already set up as hosting to put their files onto. Even with hosting, which is that place to store your files, you're gonna also need a domain name. So this is like um, the, you know, awsamazon.com or google.com or whatever website you're, you're going to, .org or .edu, those kind of website names that you can visit and then you'll see like the home page of their website. The domain name that you need along with your hosting has to be unique from any other domain or website name out there. The domain you choose and purchase is registered with the DNS or domain name system that will keep track of where the files are stored that go with that domain name. So the company that you purchase hosting from can usually help you purchase a domain name as well or offer you one for free or for a discount with your hosting. There are a number of different companies that would be happy to host your files for a fee. Here are just some examples. We have just host. Um, iPage is usually pretty cheap. Watch how they jump up in price though later. Could be careful with the fine print on these. Uh, HostGator is another one. So there's lots of those kind of companies that will host your files. Or there's even bigger companies like Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services that can also help with web hosting as well. They do a lot of other stuff but they can help with a hosting a website too. You can choose whichever hosting plan fits best with the needs of your website. And with any of these hosting sites, you can there's usually a feature where you can see if the domain that you want is available. So I might type in a domain that I like to see if it's available. So I'm typing in myperfectcompany.com and I can see that this one says it's already registered. Someone already owns this one. So I can't use it. So maybe I'd have to go up here and make it a little more unique. 
It's getting a little long, but there we go. And now I can search again to see if it's available. Oh, and we have an exact match. We can get that. They're charging $12 a year for just the domain. The hosting is going to be an additional fee per month, but that's just for the domain name there. If no one else has chosen the domain name, or in other words, it's not registered with that domain name system, the DNS, then you can usually register with it with your hosting company, and you can get them both together. Then it will have you create an account, enter your payment method and all of that. And once you have an account, you can get logged in, and then you can do, you can get your files to their server. And this is called transferring your files or tr file transfer protocol or FTP. The hosting sites usually have some FTP options available to you or you can use an application like FileZilla to connect to your hosting. So this one is a connecting to a domain I already own called byuiwebdev.com and they've got an FTP hosting site that I can hook up all here and this is something that the company that you bought your hosting from would help you set up and once I connect to their server I can then drag over my files so let's just take a look at this before I drag the files over if I go to byuiwebdev.com there is no in there's no index page basically so the index.html page is missing. That's why it's saying forbidden. Sometimes it'll say 404. So if I want to send over my site, and you can see I've got a bunch of other um, subdomains, but I don't have an index. I also need to take over any images or CSS or anything else that I have that goes with that file. I've got to drag them all over. And this is now transferring the files from my local computer to this remote server and you'll see that it's taking all a little bit of time so I'll pause it here for a minute. So once these files are now stored, now you can see them over here that they came in right there and styles and image, they all are over here. Once the files are stored on the hosting site, then when the user types in that name, they will see your the home page of your site. The home page or the default page, remember, is what the users are going to see when they just type in your domain and it's usually the index.html file. What's nice about paying for hosting is with the payment you make for the hosting you usually are going to get a free or discounted domain name and you're going to have access to their customer service so that makes a difference when you're picking out which hosting you want. It's going to help you get your account set up, help you with getting your files transferred and all the different things that you need for FileZilla to work. So there are a few companies like Glitch and GitHub Pages, and this is actually the exact same site on both of the, theirs. So this one just had my domain name in the URL, but if you're looking at um, publishing your content for free without having to get a domain and without having to pay for hosting, you can use something like Glitch or GitHub. However, with Glitch and GitHub, you're not going to have your own original domain name. For example, this one's Glitch. Notice the URL here. Your site name, or the project in this case, is going to be followed by .glitch.me. So whatever you called your project, it's going to put a .glitch.me at the end, but others will be able to see this on the internet, but you're not going to have a unique domain name, but you are getting free hosting. Or with GitHub Pages, you're going to have the name of your repository, which we'll talk about later, but followed by .github.io. So again, not an original domain, but people could type this in and it would come to your website. These are free alter alternatives to buying hosting and the domain name. So there's some different ways you can get your web page to open up in a browser and also to be on live on the internet for others to see.